Ahoy there, me hearties. This be Captain Silver Hook, and you're listening to the Two Old Pirates podcast. Set sail for an open sea of stories, tales, and some really crazy stuff. I expect you to like and subscribe, lest you be walking the plank. <laughs> Well, welcome to Podcast 94 of the Two Old Pirates. Guess who's back? Uh, it's Vinny. And it's been a while, but uh, you have some exciting stuff coming up in 2024, you said. I'm not yes. going to tell too many people, but yes. there's going to be some really cool marketing stuff over at his Gator Box uh, yes. uh, on uh, YouTube. So uh, the closer we get to that, I'm sure we'll have like a little five-minute spiel to, to really push some of the cool things that he's looking at doing. And we're looking at maybe doing a couple things here, maybe some T-shirts or cups or something in the future. Not sure. If we get enough output from you guys that you do want something, then we'll, we'll look into something like mm-hmm. that. Vinny knows how to hook all this. Yeah, stuff up. I got the hook up. So this is going to be episode 94. It's going to be our final one for the year. And we decided, should we do end of the year? Should we do like magical things that happen this year? And we went a little, uh, uh, as you'd say, a crypt keeper on this. Yeah. We decided to talk about famous people that passed away this year. Now, we can't cover everybody because we accidentally went on Wikipedia and typed in people that died in 2023. Yeah. And it was hella long. There, there was, was like there was like 25 people just for December 27th. Yeah, just for like one day. <laughs> that's one and day. And that's not like, you know, family members and friends that we all know. These are just people around the world that are known for something. And there was just... <laughs> yeah. So, if you lost somebody this year, first of all, from the bottom of our hearts, we're sorry. We've lost loved ones along the way. So we're not covering anything that is too emotionally attached to either one of us. Mm-hmm. We just thought there's some famous faces and names of people that passed away over the course of the year and that we would piggyback off of each other in a short video to go and let you know who passed away in case you didn't catch up with this or you didn't know who they were or what they did. Because some of these people were very, very famous for certain things and some of the younger crowd might not know them. Yeah. And some of the older people out there, maybe you forgot about these people, and you're like, they were still alive. Uh, the first person I'll do is probably one of the most famous people on here. Some of you that are younger might not have heard these shows, but these are literally TV shows that are like considered all-time classics. There's a man named Norman Lear. Mm-hmm. Passed away. He was 101. And uh, for a time there, he like struck gold with every single TV show that he came up with. He, uh, If you've ever heard of All in the Family with Ar- famous Archie Bunker, yep. uh, 1970s, one of the best... TV shows of all time. He came up with the Jeffersons that spun off of that. What are you talking about? No, no, that's, that's Willis. different strokes. Yeah, there's different strokes, which he also which he did. also did. Uh, he did Sanford and Son, one of my yep. favorite TV shows when I was a little kid and stuff. Uh, Good Times, Dino Might. <laughs> uh, he did Maud, which some of you might remember. He did the Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman show. Basically, all the shows that air on the TV Land Channel now, he did those. The next person I have is Marty Croft brother of Sid Croft, Sid and Marty Croft. They were uh, pioneers of children's entertainment in the 1970s. Uh, They were known for making really bombastic uh, puppet suits. So they're they're most... uh, You remember uh, what I read to you earlier, what they said? That it was for kids, but it was also for adults that... Took LSD. Took LSD. It was very... Very, very vibrant and too... Yes, it was very psychedelic. (laughs) Uh, But uh, Marty Croft, along with his brother Sid, they worked on some classic shows like H.R. Puff and stuff and Land of the Lost. I watched uh, that when I was a kid. Yeah, I'm, I'm I that have. Old. I'm that old. I've got the original Land of the Lost series on DVD. I have the original Land of the Lost comic book. Oh, oh, oh. but don't watch the Wolf Ferrell version. Yeah, it's horrible. Movie was kind of crap. Uh, but Marty Croft, he lived to be 86. Uh, I'm going to do Sandra Day O'Connor. Yep. Some of you guys might have heard about her. She was the first female Supreme Court justice. Uh, she was put on by Ronald Reagan in the 80s, and it was a big step. You know, we had had a Supreme Court since the 1780s, 1790s. And women were not allowed on there because, for whatever reason, and she was the first one. So she she made the huge step for females that I believe there's three on the court now. Oh. Uh, so this is one that made made big news earlier this year. Matthew Perry, he was 54. He of course is known for his starring role in the the TV show Friends from the 90s. <laughs> lived a, he 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 lived a hard life after Friends. So he was the one that always struggled with, like, drug addiction and problems. Uh, My next one is a famous, famous man in government. His name was Henry Kissinger. And some people look at this as one of the most evil men of the 20th century. (laughs) Uh, We talk about Stalin and we talk about Hitler and Mao and stuff like that. But Henry Kissinger, uh, when he worked with uh, President Nixon and he amped up the war 
in uh, Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. He was the one who pushed Nixon to go ahead and bomb Cambodia and Laos. Uh, next on my list is another actor, popular in the 80s, Richard Mull. He lived to be 80. He is known as uh, Bull. Best known as Bull, Bull from Night Court. Uh, but he also had a prolific career as a voice actor, yes. uh, voicing uh, characters in three different Batman cartoons, as well as the Spider-Man animated series uh, from the late 90s. Uh, I'm going to do Rosalind Carter. She just recently passed away. She was the uh, wife of Jimmy Carter, our president, uh, from 77 to 81. Uh, they were married until she died. Uh, they had been married, I believe, 76 or 77 years. Wow. Well. She was 96. She died. Uh, she had Alzheimer's. And Jimmy Carter, as of this taping, is still alive. But he's been hospice. He's been in hospice care for almost a, a year now. Here's one near and dear to my heart. Paul Rubens. He lived to be 70. Of course, he had uh, many. Yeah, he had a particular name, though, right? He did. Pee Wee Herman. Pee Wee Herman. Pee Wee Herman. Uh, he uh, was a comedian who did minor roles in like the Cheech and Chong movies. But uh, his big break was the Pee Wee Herman show. And that turned into Pee-wee's Playhouse and Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, he uh, had a Netflix movie, Pee-wee's... Uh, I know that they redid something. Yeah, they, they made a new Pee-wee movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen it yet, but um, I'll always remember... Pee-wee's Big Adventure is one of my favorite movies of all time. That's you where know. he's trying to get his bike, right? Yes, and he the, goes... The, 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 the best scene, bar none, nobody can argue about this, is what, what is the best scene? When he's in the bar... Yeah, up on his to tequila. Doing tequila. I don't know. There's there's some pretty good scenes. That, like that, I just always remember that one because they're t such tough bikers. Yeah, he's got the gray suit on. Hello, and he's on his tiptoes going like that to tequila. Yeah, and then they love him at the end. And stuff. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is cool. My favorite scene is when he gets knocked out and wakes up in Texas, and uh, he can't remember anything, but he he remembers he was just at the Alamo. And those those Hispanic men surround him. They wake him up. It's oh, like, hey, <laughs> are you okay? What do you remember? And he's like, I remember the yeah. Alamo. And everyone starts <laughs> cheering. <laughs> Next one I'm going to do is uh, Bobby Knight. Bobby Knight was a contentious college basketball coach. He won three uh, NCAA championships in basketball. He graduated about 95% of his players. But he was an asshole. I'm serious, and usually I don't cuss on this, but he would throw chairs at people. He'd Ooh. grab players by the neck. He'd kick them in the ass. He uh, tried to fight uh, uh, an NBA, uh, uh, excuse me, a referee at a, a game at like the Pan American Games or something like down in like Guatemala or something. He was going to beat the guy up and stuff. He was straight 100% driven to win every single game at, at any cost. And if he hadn't won those three NCAA championships and, and graduated so many kids. I think he probably would have been in prison somewhere because he had such a bad temper. He could just yeah. lose it. Every other word would be. The funniest story that I ever heard about him is that uh, his team was losing at halftime, and as they're all sitting in the locker room waiting for him to speak, he walks right past him, goes into the toilet, goes to the bathroom, walks out with a used piece of toilet paper, and says, see this? This is what you guys have been playing like, and threw it at them. Toilet paper with shit on it, and then walked out. And then they went out in the second half and beat the crap out of the other team and stuff. And he didn't. He wasn't like, "Come on, guys, we can do it together." And so stuff. at halftime, he, he went in, took a dump, yes, wiped his butt, and yes. then said, "This is what you guys are yeah, playing as." Them. Yes, that's Bobby Knight. <laughs> Next person on my list is someone whose whose life was cut, uh, unfortunately, short. Steve Harwell, the lead singer of Smash Mouth. Uh, popular for the song All Star, other songs as well, but All Star was their yeah. that, super, and that came out of the Shrek movie. Yes, yeah. their super breakout hit got picked up. It was featured in the Shrek movie and the Shrek movie. No, no, that was I'm a believer, right? It, well, that too. Yeah, but All Star was the opening credits to the first Shrek movie, and Shrek turned out to be a huge blockbuster. So that just propelled Smash Mouth all the way yeah. to the top, and they they released successful album after successful album i heard them on the radio all the time growing up yeah. Just, i have all their cds yeah i'm not ashamed of <laughs> i have flush you man yes i've got that walking one. on the sun yeah. yeah i've got that one but he lived to be 56 who a man who's considered like the greatest middle linebacker in the history of the nfl i know there's gonna be people that are gonna say luke keekley or uh 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 ray lewis or people like that and those were all tremendous too but 
Dick Butkus, and that's his real name, Dick Butkus, was like the meanest, most feared linebacker in the 60s and early 70s. And the only reason he had to retire after eight or nine years is because of severe knee problems. The guy would not – he would always had to play. He would never take days off. Like you see guys play two, two, uh, two sets of downs or something, and then they come off and take a breather or something. He played every single minute of every single game, and he tried to hurt you every single minute. The The – he led the league in tackles, and you talk to anybody, and he only played on two winning teams in nine years. But he showed up for the Chicago Bears every single Sunday to play. And the most famous story that I ever remember about him is that he got he was in on a tackle, and he came over to the sideline. Mind you, this is the 60s, so like their first aid kit was like a little lunchbox, and they had some bandages in there and maybe some Band-Aids and stuff. That was it. They didn't have any, like, put him underneath the tarp, take some x-rays, CT scans and stuff like that. No, it was real football. And what happened was he walked over and his pinky finger was this way. It was it was broken sideways. So his hand is like this. Evidently, the doctor on the sidelines passed out because he was, it was he was he was so gross. And he's all fixed it. There, this this is in between plays. He ran over there. They called a timeout. And he's, they're all like, that has to be surgically repaired. You've broken the bone. It's splintered. And he's all like, fix it. And they said we can't. So <laughs> what he did is he took it and snapped it back in place like that. And he's all tape it. They taped these two fingers together, and he went back in and didn't miss a play. They don't make players like that very much anymore. Uh, Jimmy Buffett, he lived to be 76. Um, He is perhaps most well-known for his song Margaritaville, which became his flagship thing. There's uh, Bar and Grill. Parrot Heads. Yeah, Uh, Parrot Heads, Margaritaville. Margaritaville is the the, the place that they sell shirts and food. But his fans are known as Parrot Heads. Yeah, Parrot Heads. And they would follow him everywhere. This is a guy who had a long catalog of music. I have have everything he ever recorded. Uh, Loved his music. But if you think about it, he only had a handful of kind of radio hits that would get people yeah. going. He had very his, his few fans, hits. He his a... fans were so uh, uh, passionate about his music that they would travel everywhere. They're almost like deadheads for the yeah. Grateful Dead, yeah. except they were parrot heads, and they just like drinking beer and just listening to his music and just, just laid back. It had a very country sound to it. A lot of it was very acoustic. I'm going to do Raquel Welch. Okay. Raquel Welch, if you like Megan Fox, if you're younger and you're like, man, Megan Fox is it. Or if you remember, like, um, uh, what's her name that was with Tommy Lee and all them? Uh, Pamela Anderson. Pamela Anderson. These are like, they were called sex pots. They were like it. I mean, all the guys loved them. They had perfect bodies and stuff. Raquel Welch was before them. She came after Marilyn Monroe. And in the mid to late 60s, all through the 70s and 80s, she was like it. She was a pinup girl in the 60s. Uh, she started in a bunch of different movies. But the thing is, the difference between, like, Megan Fox and Pamela Anderson was she literally could act. She, yeah. was, she was nominated for Emmys and some Tonys and stuff like that, so she could act and sing. And there, there, It wasn't just her body and her sex appeal, although that was a huge, significant thing. But people actually, she actually had talent, and she was respected as an actress. So Raquel Welch, unfortunately, passed away at the age of 82 this year. Uh, it meant a lot to childhood me. Bob Barker, the host of The Price is Right. He, uh, he, he lived to be 99, 99, and there were a lot of jokes going around where people say, uh, he got closest without going over to a hundred, just like the rules and the prices, right? Where people are wagering how much they think the showcases are worth. Uh, Bob Barker, he was a staple of my childhood. Mine's, and any dude, I don't think anybody can yeah, say yeah. that he was. I mean, younger kids today they can't. But we all grew up with Bob Barker with that long ass that microphone <laughs> with a little bitty head on it. And he's all like, "All right, let's see what Nancy says on the." Uh, the dryer. Yeah. 455, you got it. Oh, my God. And they yeah. all had to run up and give Bob a kiss. Yeah, and the t-shirt saying, I love Bob, yeah. and everyone's celebrating. And I, I, I remember The Price is Right being a, a staple of, like, those stay at home from school because you're sick yeah, days. Yeah. Well, back- I'm going to cover now Sinead O'Connor. Sinead O'Connor was an Irish singer, very, very young, and she had an album that kind of made a blip on the U.S. and international uh, uh, charts. Uh, and then on her second album, she had heard that Prince had written a song called Nothing Compares to You. And she had heard his demo. He had never released it. And she was like, you know, I'm a no-name Irish person. I barely have any notoriety. Could I cover this? And they're like, yeah, go ahead and cover it. So she covered mm-hmm. it, and it became a worldwide number one smash hit. It threw her into the limelight. There was a very touching video that she made on MTV that was played like every hour on the hour of her literally crying in the video. And 
basically it's a it's a heartbreak song, but it captured America, and I believe that was in uh, 90, 90 92? 90, 91, something like something that. Something like that, yeah. yeah. And the, it just, it took us over. Everybody knew the words to it, and of course Prince got all the residuals from that, but she put in her, her name on the, the map, and she was famous, and she toured, and then unfortunately... Well, now that we look back, fortunately, she did. She went yeah. on Saturday Night Live to perform, and she did a song a cappella. And then at the end of the song, she pulled out a picture of the Pope and tore it in half. And, and she said, fight the real monsters. Fight the real and monsters. Yeah. Fight yeah. the real enemies. Yeah. And she was talking about the pedophilia and the Catholic Church and everything that she knew since she was from Ireland. She was Catholic that people didn't like to talk about. And Sinead yeah. O'Connor left us at 56. At the 58, DJ Casper. Uh which, Probably. You, which you all have heard his yeah. music. You've heard his music. You might not know the man, uh, but the cha-cha slide, two hops this time. Cha-cha real smooth now. That was him. That was, yeah. <laughs> that was DJ Casper, the song that plays at, at every quinceanera, uh, high, wedding. Yeah, wedding, high school prom. You know, I went I went to a wedding earlier this year for a high school friend of mine, and I did the cha-cha slide. Uh, well, I'm with, telling you, people will just be like else. drinking punch, or they'll be eating a finger sandwich, and that yeah. song come on. They're like, and <laughs> they run out. The I got everybody, all of us. Remember, <laughs> we got to get together. To, and you can have kids 16 doing it, and you have people 60 doing it. Yeah, it's just a, a universally fun dance. And uh, thank God he created something like that that'll yeah. it, he'll always be remembered. That'll that, they're they're never not gonna play the cha cha slide. It was Tony Bennett, and uh, his most favorite or most famous song I think it was I Left My Heart in San Francisco back in the 60s but he was a he was around the time of Sinatra Dean Martin you know all these crooners back then and he just kept on living and then he got in with Lady Gaga and they did a duets album and his albums went to number one he went platinum all over again in his 80s and people were like who is this guy and there's this whole young group of people that are much younger than me or even Vinny that were like man I like this guy's voice and him, him and a new modern person like Lady Gaga so he had this whole resurgence like 30 or 40 years after he was ever famous and uh, he made it back to the top again and he made a lot of he was still touring I think when he passed away but he lived to be the age of 96 so alright we gotta talk about Tina Turner yep Tina Turner um, she was a 16 year old girl uh, named Ella May and uh, I believe she got pregnant at 16. And uh, then she met a man, na man named Ike. And he thought he could go ahead and make something with her. He played a little guitar. And they made the Ike and Tina. He renamed her Tina Turner. Uh, and they did some songs. And they got a recording contract. And then uh, they covered CCR song, Proud Mary. Mm -hmm. But in a much funkier, uh, faster pace than CCR did. And it hit. And then uh, they got on the Murph Griffin show, and they got on all these different shows, and uh, that was it. But all during that time, evidently, uh, he was beating the living crap out of Tina. And in 1976, she left him for good. She left the children. She left the money. All she asked for is, can I have my stage name, Tina Turner? That's all I have. And she didn't do anything a whole lot from 76 until 84. In 1984, she got another recording contract, and we were all blown away with what's love got to do with it. Yep. Private dancer. Uh, we don't need another hero. I mean, song after song after song started coming out, and she was back on top, bigger than ever, hitting number one, going platinum. And she continued that for probably another two decades with songs with Brian Adams and stuff like that. But uh, in the last couple of years, she hasn't been well, and she unfortunately passed away this year at the age of 83. But Tina Turner had been voted in the 80s as the lady with the sexiest legs in America. <laughs> she always wore short yeah. skirts, and didn't matter if you're white, black, from Mars, anything, you'd look at those legs and be like, dang! <laughs> yeah. And so she was known for her sex appeal, but she was a very soulful singer, and she... she In personal health. Sue Johansson. I uh, didn't even remember who she was yeah. until, until you brought it up, and I was like, really? <laughs> really? We're going to cover this person? But I remember her. So, so she, is, uh, she is a sex counselor from Canada, and in the early 2000s, she hosted Talk Sex on the Oxygen Network for Women, where it was a live call-in show where couples would call in with their questions. their marital questions, and Sue would talk in an open and frank manner yes. about the penis and the vagina. Yeah. And uh, I just think it was, it was really groundbreaking television it for was. the era. 
just like so open it's like about hey it. do you like peanut butter and jelly that's how they talk just like normal like that but it was about a hardcore sexual stuff yeah about couples and they were out there about it in america we're kind of conservative about stuff like that yeah and she was not conservative and I mean, every now and then you turn it on, you'd wonder what she's talking about tonight. Yeah, yeah. So she lived to be 92, the ripe old age of 92. Next up will be David Crosby. This guy uh, is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for two different bands. Uh, he originally was with the Birds in the 60s with uh, Eight Miles High and Turn, Turn, Turn and Mr. Tambourine Man. And he kind of noodled his way out of that band because he was very honorary. A lot of musicians couldn't get along with him because it was his way or the highway. Then he hooked up with a guy named Stephen Stills and a guy named Graham Nash, and they made Crosby, Stills, and Nash. And uh, they added Neil Young for one or two albums, and they're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, but you got uh, this beautiful harmony of these different voices, these three to four men, where whenever they play their acoustic guitars and would harmonize, it would be beautiful. Listen to, like, Sweet Judy Blue Eyes or Our Children or, I mean, Our House or um, Teach Your Children Well. There's all these different songs. Uh, the next person I'm going to cover is uh, somebody, everybody in here should probably know if you've ever watched a John Wick movie. But I remember the guy from back in the 80s, uh, or, no, 80s, back in the early 2000s on a show called The Wire. And his name was Lance Reddick. Mm -hmm. Off screen, evidently the sweetest guy in the world. But he had this demeanor on screen that just sucked you in. So if you remember the John Wick movies, whenever he goes to the... Um, the big hotel? Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the Continental. He's the one who's all like, hello, Mr. Wick. He's the man who's like standing behind and gets him his room and stuff. But he was in The Wire, which is considered one of the greatest TV shows of all time. I believe he's also in Bosch, which mm -hmm. was another TV show that's on like uh, Amazon. But uh, Lance Reddick was an amazing, amazing actor and died far too young. He was only 60 years old. Yeah. Uh, next is another musician, Gordon Lightfoot. If you didn't know about Gordo... Uh, he was a Canadian musician, and he came up the old way of touring and just playing and playing and playing. And then finally in 1972, I believe it was, he had his first big hit, and it was called If You Could Read My Mind. He was what you would call like a folk singer, uh, not a whole lot of instrumentation, him and acoustic, maybe a little bit of uh, other guitar, and maybe some drums. Uh, but that went platinum. And then he had his biggest hit with Sundown, uh, which was actually uh, my... My brother, uh, that was his favorite song. Uh, his name, my, my brother Peter, that was his favorite song was Sundown by Gordon Lightfoot. When I was a little bitty kid and I heard this very haunting song come on the radio and I had to like it. You can ask your mom about this. Mm -hmm. uh, it was called The Wreck of the Emmon Fitzgerald. Yep. And I remember hearing that as a little bitty boy, like three or four years of age, and it's just always stuck with me. And that's one of my favorite songs of all time, especially from the 70s. Uh, next up on my list... Uh, the pioneer of trash TV in the 90s, love him or hate him, Jerry Springer died at 79. He was the host of the Jerry Springer show, and that he's was... the one who started, like, the UFC stuff. <laughs> he, uh, his show pioneered the daytime tabloid programming, oh. just trash TV where... The, the dregs of society would agree to come on his show for a nominal fee yeah. and just air their dirty laundry and hash it out. You are not the father. You are the father. Is I, I my my I've husband been, I've been is, dating this one and that's my yeah. cousin and we have a child. Just the yeah. most outlandish my, stuff. My, my husband is now my wife, and, a transgender. But, but, but there was two different things. I don't know how well you remember this, but there was two specific things about the audience that showed up. Number one, they are allowed to yell yes. and insult people. Yes. So whenever he'd give the microphone, there was no questions like, but how does your family feel about this? They were like, man, I would take either one of them home with me. Look at how ugly. And they would even pour more fuel to the fire. Yeah. But the last thing is, there was usually, on most episodes, after a while, fights. Yes. and there But be we found out later on that every single fight was fake. <laughs> they were all set up. They were told ahead of time, scrap, we're going to separate. You remember the bald guy? Yeah, the big bald yeah, security come out guy. There and, but the thing is, the people in the audience went there for two things, to throw insults and to try to watch human violence against each other. Yes. And that's kind of sad if you think about it. Yeah, it, it was, it was it, entertainment to them. And thank God the fights weren't real and nobody actually got hurt. Yeah. But there was legitimately people showing up hoping to see somebody get their ass kicked on national TV. Yeah, it, just it's, it, it's just a sideshow. 
You know, the anything you could possibly think yes. of, like it the, got really crazy. The KKK was yep, on there, yep, yep. you know, like it's Satanists. Oh yeah, uh, you <laughs> name anything that's got it really, really crazy or out there. Yeah, he would invite guests. Some of them were actors that would just come on and play the part just to go and get viewers up because now he had to compete because there was other shows like the yeah. Ricky Lake Show, Maury. And, yeah, they yeah. would all do the same thing. So he had to amp it up and amp it up and, yeah. up. and then finally it kind of crashed after a while. And they all he did, yeah. Uh, but Jerry Springer, he lived to be 79. Uh, I'm going to pick... Uh, now, this is going to upset some of y'all if you're football fans because you're going to say Barry Sanders or Walter Payton or um, Emmett Smith. The greatest running back of all time is Jim Brown. All right, Jim Brown played for nine years in the NFL. He retired at the age of 29. He won eight rushing titles. Uh, he won league MVP. And at the age of 29, he decided to quit to go make movies. He said, I'm just going to make movies. This is at, you're at the peak of your physical, uh, uh, what would you call it? Like, like your performance. Yeah. Uh, at 29, you're the number one running back, bar none, in the NFL. Everybody fears you. He's one of the only running backs, I think, in NFL history to average at least 100 yards per game. Uh, he was just, he was a Superman out there. And then he just quits. He just retires and starts making movies. This person is neither. Ted Kaczynski, also known as the Unabomber, uh, who sent explosives to people in the mail. For like decades. Yeah. To, and he, he has a kill count. He, uh, he lived off the grid, sent, he built his homemade bombs, sent them to the mail to disrupt business and government operations, and he was eventually tracked down and caught. How was he and, caught? Do you know? Uh, no, I don't know how he got caught. Uh, he sent his... Um, he wrote a manifesto and he sent it and he said, if you don't pr print this, I'm going to send another bomb. And so they said, all right, we'll print it. And his brother bought the paper <laughs> and his brother read that paper and then called the New York Times or whoever published it and said, that sounds like my brother, Ted. And we haven't talked to him in a long time. He lives like in a cabin in the middle of nowhere, no running water, no sewage. And he's brilliant. He went to like Harvard. Yeah, he was a like professor. That. And he's just really against technology and modern society. But everything he's saying in this long manifesto sounds like the stuff he used to tell us before he went off the grid. You might want to just check on him. And the FBI, FBI went out and sure enough, they caught him. He so, had all the stuff inside his cabin. He was a had little a bit. wild side. And he died in prison at the age of 81 this year. I'm going to cover a guy most of you have never heard of, but literally he has changed every single track athlete in an event since 1968, I believe it was. If you go to a junior high track meet, a high school track meet, a college track meet, a professional track meet, an Olympic track meet, and you watch this one event, you'll see every single person doing what this man invented. His name was Dick Fosbury. And up until 1968, I believe it was, every single person who did the high jump where you run and flip over backwards they had all scissored it like jumping a hurdle so you run at it and you just jump off the ground and throw one leg over and try to pull yourself over and they got that up well over six seven feet something like that right mm -hmm. jumping like that like that's crazy and he came into the olympics and started running at it but instead of jumping like that he turned and he pivoted off of his twist. leg and twist and flopped over it with his back facing down and his eyes facing straight up and landed. And the people from Spain and England and Cuba and Russia, they all like looked at him like, what the hell did he just do? Yeah. Nobody had ever done it before. And now nobody scissor kicks over it ever since. After that, every person studied how he did that. And that is how you said it. And I, I think it. the record today is still set by a Cuban named Javier, Javier Sotomayor. I believe he has the all-time high jump record. And they all do the, it's called the Fosbury Flop. So Dick <laughs> Fosbury, he passed away this year, unfortunately, but he changed athletics bar none. You will have 12-year-olds out there learning the Fosbury flop, and you'll have gold medal champions get, doing the Fosbury flop, and nobody did that until he actually invented it. It had been wow. going on for decades. And he was the only one who said, why jump forward? Why not jump back? So Dick Fosbury uh, lived to be 76. Last person on my list is, uh, wouldn't say he's a good person. He's better <laughs> than the Unabomber. But he was a very uh, divisive, conservative personality, Pat Robertson. Uh, 
known as the host of the 700 Club. Very, very right wing, very conservative, very Christian. Uh, he, I wouldn't call him very Christian. Uh, well, that's he, I'd that's say his he words. espoused Christianity, but he was. Well, yeah, this is not a nice. So uh, he was the owner of the Christian Broadcasting Network, mm-hmm. CBN. Which yeah, I, I I remember seeing uh, clips of him over the years as he got he ran for president several yeah. times. He was an egomaniac. Uh, he had the ability to use uh, belief in Jesus Christ as his base, and then he had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars acquired over a long, long life uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, but he would say some of the most unchristian things yeah. that you'd ever hear. Like, but he always had this nice grandfather. Yeah, smile. yeah. He would lure you in with how trustworthy say, he is. We'd looked. like to have a, a Vinny on today, and it's so good to see. I'm sorry that you're gonna burn in hell, but uh, <laughs> oh, my hand hurts a little bit there, like on a skillet. But it's because you're getting close there. Uh, he he was he seemed like a grandfatherly nice guy, and he'd look right in the camera with his big old smiling face and just be like, and they'll burn in hell. And I was just like, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, dude, judge much? But Pat had those cockroach genes. The man lived to be ninety three. All right, so uh, we hope that you've enjoyed episode 94. 94. This is going to be the last one of the year. We'll be coming back with one in the new year. I'll probably come back up to Rockport and hang out with Vinny and grab a lunch, and we'll maybe we'll do a true crime one then since you guys <laughs> seem to really love those. Yeah. But uh, we really appreciate all these times, and I know that we started the fifth season already and stuff, but literally we're about to fall into 2024, and you know things have changed over mm-hmm. the last, you know, four years since we first you know that when we started this up and you came aboard after a year and and remember he's still doing his thing on gator box yep. and uh he did um uh, uh, his extra life uh, the extra life and uh when i walked in he had a huge mat on the floor which i thought was like a game mat but it was actually a nice uh, rug yeah. that they gave him yeah for, it's uh that's a, an, an award for my fundraising efforts this year they sent me a really nice like four by six foot rug and last year they sent me a fully functional mechanical keyboard that lights up and everything. And then the year before that they. But sent you do me... it without any of those. Things. Oh yeah, no, I do it for the. Ki- I want to show you something real cool. Hey, speaking of, this is why I do it. Check this out. This little this little baggie right here. Is that meth? <laughs> Look at this. Extra life, ten thousand dollars raised. This is their Extra Life Lifetime Achievement Award. Only given out to people who have raised at least five figures for the charity. This took me 11 years to get. 11 years of marathons, fundraising, editing the videos, putting it on YouTube, the practices. Eating cheeseburgers. Eating the cheeseburgers. Eating hot tenders or whatever. (laughs) Yeah, the spicy tenders, all the rehearsals, all those those long hours of putting in for speedrunning practice. This is what it's all about. So, you oh, know. No, it's about the kids. It's about, well, I mean, <laughs> it, it goes to, this is. Fuck those kids. Yeah. See, this, this is what it's all about. Fuck you kids. This is a representation of my yes. efforts for the kids. This That's what, what I meant. I, you know what That's I meant. What I, yeah, I know. 